So good afternoon, everyone. I'm really sorry about the delay, very sorry. Uh, I, I sort of hate to, when people keep me waiting and I, we really apologize for being late, but I think we'll, we'll be able to answer questions, have a good conversation with Yang. Uh, I think what, what Yang has, has done building WhatsApp, it's one of these stories that you get the headline, but sometimes you don't get the story, right? Because people are captivated by the, by the headline. But I, what I'm captivated about as a fellow entrepreneur is a, the story. And, and especially I'm interested in what drives entrepreneurs to build the products they build. And especially why WhatsApp? Why building WhatsApp and not build any other product? Like the passion for that one product, I think is the first thing maybe, Jan, that I wanted to ask you, which is that why build WhatsApp? What, was the, what were the choices that you confronted when you chose WhatsApp and why WhatsApp? Thank you. Uh, Sorry, everybody, we're late. Uh, I'm actually not feeling that great, but <laughs> I couldn't actually be more excited to be here. And I'm really looking forward to Q&A. Uh, that's actually that's my favorite part when <laughs> talking to people is um, getting to hear what uh, your experience is like with a product. If, if you have ideas for what you think we should be doing differently or uh, just feedback about the product in general, that's what I'm really looking forward to today. Uh, why, why we started WhatsApp? Uh, it actually started as a project uh, for me to learn iPhone development and kind of figure out how iPhone works. And um, there are many reasons for why, why it happened. One of them was uh, I, I really didn't want to get a job. And so uh, I, I was trying to, like, have all these excuses where I wouldn't have to go and get a real job. And um, when I bought an iPhone, my very first iPhone, I started kind of building um, uh, building the iPhone SDK, uh, building apps with it. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just tell people that I'm an iPhone developer and they'll leave me alone. And my friends can like not bug me about getting a job. Um, and we, we started playing with this idea of integrating your address book and integrating your kind of physical device capabilities uh, and, and making it all kind of fit together and work when, uh, when you try and connect with your friends. And then it just kind of took off on its own. Um, we made a beta and then we made, uh, it started very simple, we made a beta and got like 10 of our friends to use it. Um, you know, when you go from zero users to 10 users, it's like a huge thing, right? It's like <laughs> you went from nothing to something. It's, it's like a binary. And uh, then we submitted it to Apple Store, and that worked. It was like, okay, well, now I have people who I don't know using the product. That's even more exciting. Um, it's like people I've never met in my whole life are now using something I've made. Um, and then we kept iterating and iterating and adding features and uh, eventually we added messaging and that's that's kind of when it really took off. Um, I think it was uh, summer of 2009. Um, so there, there are many reasons why why we did it. Um, obviously I think the biggest one is that we just wanted to make something cool and we wanted to just build, right? That's like the fundamental thing that I think drove me early on and still drives me is that um, you just want to build cool stuff. You, like, you want to build something that other people use, and that's really exciting. It's like out of nothing, out of thin air, um, you write some lines of code, and you compile it, and you package it, and it goes over the air, and people use it. And it's, it's just like really awesome, and, and I think that's, that's what... Uh, I guess that's kind of a long answer as to why we did it. I think, I think there's something that it's not so, um, let's say we both share a, a background in the sense of having left our native countries, Ukraine in your case, Argentina in my case, partly political instability in the countries where we come from. Uh, and I heard you at DLD say that you felt once you leave your country that to keep in touch 
becomes something of paramount importance. I mean, that's what happened when I invented call back in the 90s, which was a cheaper way of making a phone call, uh, sending phone calls through the United States. And, and everything I've done in my career, it's, it is a, a teenage-driven obsession because $5 a minute, which is what I had to pay to call back Argentina, was just prohibited to me in my own personal life. Like when you emigrated from Ukraine and when you, did you feel that there was something about the inability of people to speak or the cost of communicating that made you want to build a global platform for people to communicate basically for free? Yeah, I have my own story about Argentina and trying to communicate when I went. I actually went to Argentina like three months before I started WhatsApp and um, there are like all these weird dialing codes and just like for somebody to call from outside into Argentina is like nearly impossible. You have to like know the secret handshake. That was pretty frustrating, um, but we figured it out. Uh, you're right. I mean, uh, I, I immigrated in 1992 and as I was saying uh, yesterday during my keynote, if you think back to 1992, I mean, now everybody's sitting like with a laptop and a smartphone and a digital camera and an iPad. And 22 years ago, none of that stuff existed. Like, even, even mobile phones didn't exist. Forget about smartphones, like, mobile phones didn't exist, right? So 22 years ago, everybody would be sitting here just like, with no gadgetry at all. And that made communication pretty painful, right? You actually had to go, um, walk up to a physical phone that was connected to a wall somewhere and you had to like dial and hope that the person would be next to a phone on the other end. Um, and when you have to call between Europe and the United States, that all, all makes it only more complicated. Um, so yeah, definitely having challenges of uh, staying in touch early on contributes to how passionate we are about making sure that today people do not have issues when they need to communicate with friends and family. And now you're thinking of adding voice to the product, right? Uh, which I, I find very reasonable since I think what you did to text, which is you turn a service where sometimes they were charging 40 cents to make, to write 140 characters, uh, an all-you-can-eat service, but not only an all-you-can-eat texting, but a better, more intelligent texting with feedback, with a double check, and just those little innovations. By the way, I should say that in Spain, where we are uh, having this conversation right now, WhatsApp is incredibly popular. Uh, in many cases, because it is uh, a confirmatory way of having a conversation with somebody, and there have been YouTube videos, funny YouTube videos that have been made about the, double, the WhatsApp double check and so on. Now, voice, you can't just do voice like anyone else. You didn't do text like anyone else. You can't do voice like anyone else. So give us some indication of how you plan to tackle voice. That's actually a very good observation, and, and that's why we haven't done voice for such a long time, even though people have been asking us. Um, you write about the messaging. When we started experimenting with messaging and, and we added it into WhatsApp, we knew a lot about the limitation of texting. Uh, it's basically everything you just described. Uh, there is no easy way to get a confirmation. Uh, it's very limited. Uh, it's not online. It's not threaded. Uh, you don't know if the other person is typing, if they're online, if they got the message. And so for us, it, was, it wasn't very hard to understand that we can build a better experience. It was, it was a no-brainer, right? Anybody can do it. Um, and a lot of companies have tried and also been fairly successful at it. So for us to build a better SMS was very easy. And that's why we knew that messaging uh, in our product would do really well. Uh, you're right with voice, there, there hasn't been a whole lot of kind of, uh, there hasn't been a lot of uh, like true innovation in voice. Uh, you know, Apple introduced visual voicemail, that was 2007, and that was like the big thing. Like, uh, 
we, we actually did something very interesting. We have um, voice messaging in our application when you can just like record a voice message and send it to somebody. Uh, we did something that we thought was really cool where the color of the microphone changes when the other person listens to the voice message. So it changes from like green to blue. Um, and we kind of thought it was cool because on one hand you know that the person got the voice message, but on the other hand you also know, well, they just played it, so they heard it, and you know that um, they actually listened to the content of the message. Uh, but you're right, when it comes to voice, there is not a whole lot you can do. It's just bits going over the wire, and this is why we struggled for so long, and this is why it took us a long time to do it, because uh, when we do something, we want to do it better than what exists. We don't want to just say, oh yeah, we also have voice and just check mark on a product sheet and move on, right? That's not, that's not very exciting for us. And we've been researching the voice uh, functionality a lot and what we've done is actually something really cool. Um, and not to get very technical, but you have different bandwidth capabilities uh, depending on the network and sometimes you um, might start a call on your phone when you have a really good 3G coverage, you go into a tunnel and it drops to like edge and when you come out of the tunnel, you might end up with 4G coverage. And so we have this like adaptive um, codec which actually adapts to the network uh, bandwidth that you have available. So, uh, and I think this is where we're gonna be different and do this really well, uh, is we're gonna be able to provide really good quality when, when you don't have a good network connectivity. And if you do have a good network connectivity, we're gonna be able to take a better advantage of it. Um, and we've been working on it for a while and hopefully when it comes out and, and gets released in a few months, everybody will be able to use it and enjoy it. But uh, you're right, there's not a whole lot we can do, but uh, there's not a whole lot you can do on a user experience side of it, but there's a lot you can do on the technology underneath. And that's where we've been focusing mostly when it comes to doing the voice product. So I saw a video, I saw a video on YouTube the other day of a very complicated hack, I mean, not so complicated, but somewhat complicated, where you would get an iPad and you would stick it into iTunes, you would get your iPhone, you would take the WhatsApp away from the iPhone, you would kind of stick it in the iPad, and you would kind of have WhatsApp in your iPad. And I thought, wow, what a, why? Why, why, why is it so hard? And I know you're by birth tied to phone numbers, but the iPad is so big, right? And, and there's other devices, and some of the people who love WhatsApp, the more they love WhatsApp, the more they find it lacking in other families of devices. What, what do you think about sort of bringing it everywhere, or having WhatsApp everywhere, sort of the way Facebook Messenger is everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we're a little bit more popular than Facebook Messenger. <laughs> you are um, a little bit more popular, yes. Well, I think the, I think the answer is pretty simple. Um, I actually usually don't, don't uh, go on stage with my phones, but this time I forgot to leave them backstage. The answer is pretty simple. Look at my table. Mm. Where is my tablet? Right? I, I have my phone, actually, as I'm speaking with all of you, my phone is like two feet away from me. And I think... Um, this only goes to prove uh, what we believe. We believe that your phone is always with you and your tablet might be like somewhere in a bag or somewhere. And when you try to build from multiple devices, um, it's very hard to come up with a good solution that deals with an issue of notifications, right? So if you have your tablet next to you and your phone next to you and you notify on both devices, it's annoying. It's like, well, now you're like over notifying the user and you, um, interrupt them too much. Uh, and if you try to be really smart about it, you could be missing notifications, not showing them notifications for really important messages. So uh, for us, uh, we struggle with it because we know that people ask us about web client or desktop client or, or tablet client. Um, well, we, like to, we like to keep things simple. And a lot of times when we look at um, SMS is kind of like this ultimate simple technology. I mean, it's so simple that it wouldn't send you more than 140 characters or 160 characters, and it's so simple that it didn't even have multimedia. It got added later. And so we kind of, 
on one hand, we have a better product, but on the other hand, we respect SMS because it, it's such a pure, simple technology, and, and that's what we try to um, a lot of times emulate in our philosophy and in our product. It's the, the thing that made SMS so successful and so popular is the fact that if I were to SMS you today, forget about iMessage and WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, on pure SMS level, if I were to send you a message, I know it will go to your phone, and your phone is probably next to you. It's either in your pocket or it's on a table next to you. And uh, that's, that's what we wanted to kind of recreate, that experience of if I send a WhatsApp message, I know it's not going to go to your screen on your computer or it's not going to go to your tablet. It's going to go to your phone, and your phone is always with you. Yeah, but I, I can see a different angle to this. I mean, if you think about it, sort of when Zuckerberg did Facebook, it was all on the PC. And he was kind of caught by surprise, then he caught up with mobile, right? And he had to make a transition to mobile. My, my guess as an entrepreneur who's, who's been doing this for a while is that the telephone app in the smartphone may be, may be on its way out. That, we, that, that link to telephone numbers that this generation finds so important to be linked to a telephone number, that in the future you may not be linked to a telephone number or for example, in our case, we build Phone, which is now the largest Wi-Fi network in the world. We do cellular offloading, and we do Wi-Fi. Well, we see more and more devices that are Wi-Fi only and are in your pocket, not just Wi-Fi only like a big tablet, like you said, that people don't want to use. And the people who have Wi-Fi only just in your pocket cannot have WhatsApp. And I would, I would venture to say that you will give up this principle at some point of being tied to the phone number uh, that's my guess, I don't know. <laughs> uh, perhaps. Uh, maybe a hundred years from now, I, I don't know. I think. Um, I, I, I don't see. I'll, I'll watch on that one. I, I don't see <laughs> phone numbers going away anytime soon, no matter how quickly technology evolves. I mean, there's certain things that are, are such a large part of everything we do, I mean, we still have cars that run on oil, right? And everybody kind of agrees that that's not very good for the planet. And we've been running on oil for a very long time and there will be cars running on oil for another 50 years or so. So it's not very easy to just like, for somebody to walk in and like flip the switch and say, okay, no more phone numbers, now everybody's gonna be identified by what, right? So then you have to have like a bunch of people from different countries get together, agree on stuff, and. You know, that already happened like 50 years ago when everybody figured out country codes and phone numbers. And that's kind of like the beauty of it is that um, once you have a system that works, even if it's not perfect, it's very hard to get rid of it. It's similar to like IPv4 versus IPv6, right? It's like, well, IPv4s are kind of like IP addresses. They're out of IP addresses, but everybody's still going to use IPv4 for another, I don't know, many, many years. And so you... You're right, eventually we're going to get rid of IPv4 and it's going to be replaced with IPv6 and we're going to get rid of oil, uh, cars that are driven by oil and every, everything's going to be electric or solar or whatever. Um, and eventually phone numbers will get replaced with something else that we don't even know what it's going to be. But all, that's, all that takes a very long time, right? It, it's not going to be 10 years or 20 years. It's going to be 50 to, I don't know, many more years. Um, and... Uh uh, I guess Facebook has a different approach. They think the Facebook identity is a very important part of your life. What I was thinking that would be, it's going to be interesting because Mark said that you guys will remain independent and it sounds like you will remain independent uh, just like Instagram remain pretty independent, which is great. But there's one issue I'd like you to address that it is in the mind of a lot of people around the world, probably more outside the USA where people are more concerned about the NSA and spying and security and safety. And they see Facebook, certainly not the way I see Facebook, by the way, because I'm on Facebook all the time and I don't care, but other people are worried that now you were bought by Facebook and they say, can we, some people have a mistrust of Facebook, yes, and how can they still trust you and the safety of your product being Facebook owned? Yeah, I, I, I had some people ask me that question in the last couple of days and, and they usually formulate the question uh, in, in a phrase that is like, well, what's gonna happen to my data? And I, I usually turn to them and say like, what data? 
and, and I keep having this, it's like this recurring dialogue that I keep having with everybody. It's like, well, we don't have your data to begin with. It's like we're, we're very um, minimalistic when it comes to people's data. Like we don't know your real name, we don't know your age, your address, your gender, your email address, where you live. Like we, we don't know all that stuff and we don't store messages once they're delivered to your phones or like gone from our system. So uh, that, we have no plans to change that. Like in order for a product to be fast and efficient and reliable, everything we have today have to continue. Like we've been pretty successful and we've gotten to 465-ish million users, monster million active users, because we have this philosophy of being very minimalistic with our product and um, even things like bandwidth efficiency, right? All of that matters when it comes to people's data. And like, we have no plans to change it because when you do something that is successful, you don't want to just say, oh, okay, well, we've been doing something and it's working, been working well for us, but screw that, we're going to go do something else. It's like, who? You, you don't do that. So um, there are no plans to do any kind of integrations or any kind of additional stuff that has to do with data. Um, what we've been doing historically, we we're going to continue to do, which is try to know as little about our customers as possible. That's kind of our goal. So I, I, what I thought, you know, this is an event for, for students and young entrepreneurs, so I don't know if you agree with me, but why don't we open it up for questions and we see what questions you guys have. Uh, please raise your hand if you have a question and the microphone will come to you. This is my favorite part of <laughs> Yes, I see a question here in the, is there a microphone or somebody giving out microphones? I think I can just hear her. Okay, so here close. there's, okay, please, yeah. Hi, Jan, thanks for being here. Um, we met about a year ago uh, when ESA came to the Valley and we met in your offices and you spoke passionately at that time about this philosophy of charging for a service, uh, what, you, what you think it's worth. Um, and that's the economic model that uh, WhatsApp has been using and growing with so successfully. So uh, I was really struck by that, the idea that you, you want something and you value it and you're willing to pay a certain price for that. Do you see that philosophy carrying forward now into the future? Um, is that something that will be sustainable as, as you go forward? Absolutely. Um, I think it's actually pretty important for people to understand that uh, our business model is not changing, right? We have no plans to modify our business model. In fact, a lot of people um, told us uh, in the last few days, they're like, oh, now you can be free and not charge people money. And we're like, no, we still want to have the same business model we have today because for us to be free, then the only alternative is advertising and we don't want to do that. Even Mark understands that you don't put advertisement into a messaging product, it doesn't, it just doesn't work, period, right? So um, we think we have a pretty good monetization strategy and we're gonna continue to execute on that. In fact, um, I think uh, Facebook benefits by having multiple monetization strategies. They have advertising system and now they also have subscription revenue, right? It, it's actually a very smart way to build a business that does multiple things. If you look at successful companies like General Electric, for example, they have many different business units that uh, generate uh, revenue using different sources. Um, or, you know, my favorite example actually is, is, is uh, maybe not that um, great, but if you look at a company like Porsche, right, they used to make sports cars, and uh, I think in like 1997 they weren't really doing so great, so then they started doing um, SUVs and sedans and all the like low level entry cars and and now they have like this thriving business because they have all these different uh, models of cars that they sell so it's, it's good to have diversification and so to answer your question no we have no plans to change that at all thank you yes I think she was sorry hi Jan uh, my name's AJ uh, and so I'm part of a team here that has recently been experiencing some relatively minor success. And I know you've had a lot of really great success recently, but I'm sure that came with a lot of lows. And we, we just know that we can anticipate lows, but we don't really know how to prepare ourselves for them. So I'd love to hear about some of the lows you faced and how you prepared for them or handled them when they came your way. Um, I think you just have to 
simply ignore it. Um, we've had, well, first of all, like, you can't stop. You just gotta like keep going, right? It's like it, it doesn't matter what happens around you, even if there's like a World War III breaks out. You just like it doesn't matter to you. you just gotta keep going on your own mission. Um, we definitely have had our, our own share of, of issues, uh, especially before we added messaging when we started prototyping and kind of playing around with this idea of a status that the application started out with, it didn't go well at all. And so we tried one thing and we tried another thing and we kept trying to add features and none of it worked until we actually said, okay, well, maybe we should try to do messaging and make it, uh, make it a messaging product. I think the most important thing is that you just don't quit. You just kind of like keep going and trying and trying and trying. Um, and I think that's the only way to kind of get through it. Yes. You can just, we can hear you. Um, Should I repeat the question for everybody? So it's how important it is to teach digital skills to young people so they can become entrepreneurs. I think it's very important, but I, I, I'm obviously biased. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think it's a big deal. Education in general is a big deal. And I think as society, um, as we become more and more digitalized, uh, you know, everybody now has a computer in front of them or a tablet or a phone, well, all that stuff is powered by computer instructions, right? It's a code that is compiled that runs and executes operations. And, you know, just like 20 years ago, people understood how the car worked, right? It's like you got wheels and they turn and you got a steering wheel and you have like oil and gas. And um, I think it's important for people to understand how technology works. Uh, it, it makes people more educated and uh, obviously empowers them to do great things if you really can understand and build on top of what you have today. So, yeah, I think, I think um, computer literacy, literacy education is, is a big deal. And, you know, I wish more people would go into computer science and computer engineering. It's, it's a pretty good skill to have. I see another question here. Hi. Um, well, over here. Hi. Okay. Should I go? <laughs> Sorry. Well, yes, go Me? here okay. at the front Hi. and then the other one. Hello, um, it's Ingrid from TechCrunch. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. All right, questions are done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, first of all, do you see Facebook continuing Messenger as a product now that they've got WhatsApp, or do you think they might consolidate them? Second of all, what's your opinion on the fact that there are so many messaging platforms out there? Um, I mean, you know, it sort of looks like an area that's very ripe for more consolidation. What do you think about that? Uh, well, first of all, it's great that TechCrunch finally realized that we exist. Thank oh, you. my God. <laughs> 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 Uh, I, won't, be, to, I won't get into that right now. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, it's been our goal to kind of stay off TechCrunch for as long as possible, or, or any media, actually, to be fair, to TechCrunch. Our goal has been to kind of stay under the radar and, and avoid media for as long as we can. Thank you for pointing that um, part out of what you've just said. So uh, you will have to ask uh, Facebook, obviously, the first part of the question. Um, the second part of the question was what I think about a lot of different um, messaging platforms out there. I think it's great. I think that's what defines uh, progress, right, and gives people choice. It would be very difficult to say, well, you only have to use this one particular platform. I think, um, I think it's important for people to have uh, freedom to use whatever products they want. If somebody wants to have disappearing pictures and they want to go use a product that lets them send disappearing pictures, of themselves, that, that's fine, right? That's, that's the beauty of capitalism, right? That's a free open market system. So uh, I think that's fine. Uh, we have no problem with that, as long as everybody keeps using WhatsApp. <laughs> oh. There was another question, somebody else had a mic. Yes. Hi, uh, hi I'm, I'm just Ooh. curious, going back to the monetization strategy question, um, do you guys, have you guys considered WhatsApp for business? like WhatsApp servers installed within the business and helping business users communicate along secure 
mobile devices? Uh, what's up for business? Uh, it's a good question. We, we know that a lot of businesses use WhatsApp. In fact, uh, I think a week or two ago, I was reading the story where, um, sorry, in India, you can order vegetables uh, through WhatsApp. Uh, we have like Google alerts that uh, sends us news about WhatsApp. And so we read this uh, interesting article where it, it's a small business and they deliver fresh produce. So that was kind of cool. Uh, we, we understand that a lot of small businesses use WhatsApp and they even do things like ordering, um, you can like order a sandwich from your local sandwich store. So you like WhatsApp the order and five minutes later you go downstairs and get it. Um, we struggle with the business aspect of it because we're so consumer focused and we feel like we haven't finished our, our mission yet. We want WhatsApp to be in the hands of every single consumer. We want WhatsApp to be in the hands of every single uh, smartphone user. And that's not the case yet, right? So there's like one and a half billion smartphone users and we're on, a third of, on one third of that. So uh, part of it is focus, right? We always we actually have uh, focus. Uh, we refer to it as an F word inside our company because we use it so much. Um, Part of it is focus, right? We focus on consumer, and, and we're such a small company that for us to go and build a product for business would mean that we take, the, we take our eyes off building a product for the consumer. Um, the other thing that makes it challenging is that business interests and consumer business uh, and consumer interests sometimes don't align. Um, to put it in, in very plain terms, I'm talking about spam. So. Uh, I don't know about you, but I personally like, hate spam. And the problem is when you let businesses onto your network, um, most of them are probably going to be OK. But even 5% of businesses that end up spamming your population or your network um, will create a lot of issues and a lot of problems. What is that? <laughs> um, so you know, we, str we struggle with it because of spam. Um, I'm, I'm like fascinated by that thing. <laughs> we struggle with it. No, you can keep it. It's fine. <laughs> we struggle with it because of spam, right? We don't want we don't want businesses to kind of join the WhatsApp network and then spam all of our all of our users with promotions for sandwiches or produce ordering or stuff like that. So um, it, it's it's something we discuss internally. We just haven't found a good solution to deal with it yet. Okay. One question. Should we do Wait, one go, more go and on. finish? Hello? No, no, Mark. Hi, so you say that your strategy is to stay on, on mobile phones and with, with phone numbers. And also, you've got a strategy around messaging and, and around voice as well. Um, and to me, that seems to be on a collision course with uh, network operators. So, for instance, I've got uh, Virgin Mobile from the UK. When I'm data roaming in Spain, they block WhatsApp, can't use it on their data roaming services. So my question is, if you are on a collision course with network operators, or maybe, maybe you think you're not, how does that play out? And, and what do you think the outcome will be? And, and, and what do you, how, do you, how do you think you're going to be blocked by them? Or, or, or do you think you'll be able to deal, do deals with them? Uh, well, first of all, I think you probably need to get a new mobile operator if WhatsApp is not working I on it. I totally agree with that. I'm changing when I get back. Um, good. We actually have really good relationship with carriers, believe it or not. We have done some really amazing deals in the past. And um, what we actually help carriers do is drive data usage on their network. There, we hear stories of people in development, in developing countries who kind of walk in through the door and they buy a smartphone. And the first thing they say is, I want a data plan because I want to use WhatsApp to keep with my relatives in other parts of the world. And so. We all know that the world is going to data, right? I was actually talking about it yesterday, where we feel that five years from now, 10 years from now, while you're still probably going to have a phone number, you're going to be using way more data than, than you're using today. Uh, you already do. Everything, everything you, that happens on your smartphone that is not a phone call is basically data. You know, Facebook, Google, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp. Um, you download a movie, you watch a video on YouTube. It's all basically bits and bytes, right? It's ones and zeros. That's basically all that this is about. And so we, we work a lot with carriers to kind of drive the 
um, data, data plans uh, adoption throughout the world. And we've done some really amazing deals. We actually have a roaming deal with uh, Ikea in Hong Kong, and we're doing more of those. And as I mentioned yesterday, we're going to be doing a deal with E Plus in Germany that we're really excited about that is going to launch in a few months. So we actually have this very symbiotic relationship with a lot of carriers who understand that the future is actually going to be all about data. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jan. It's Patrick. I'm here. OK. OK. <laughs> I have actually two questions. First question, a little bit um, t towards Amrat's question. In my company, we still use BlackBerry and BlackBerry Messenger because they consider it as a very secure device. So do you have also like aims to focus this let's say serious uh, business market for secure uh, text messaging. And my second question was actually, what happened last Saturday? <laughs> what happened last Saturday is um, we had a network issue um, that uh, got resolved fairly quickly, but the network issue caused some of our backend servers to um, not recover co correctly uh, because they lost network connectivity and they couldn't connect to each other. And once they were connecting back to each other, um, they were kind of like this weird, weird state where we had to shut everything down and then bring everything back up. It's, it's kind of like stopping an engine on a plane that is up in the air and then starting the engine back up. It's kind of like one of those things. And I think the last time we had to do it was probably three years ago because um, the way our, our infrastructure is set up, it, we, we actually use this. Um, thing called Erlang. I don't know how many people here even know what it is. Who here knows what Erlang is? Except you guys who work at WhatsApp. <laughs> so yeah, somebody's very excited about Erlang there in the back. It's like one hand goes up. So Erlang is, a, is this actually really cool programming language. It's a functional programming language. And one awesome thing about Erlang is that it allows you to do hot code loading. What it means is that if you write a program in C and you run it on your Linux or FreeBSD or Unix server, and you want to make changes to it, you can't. You have to like compile a new one, stop the old one, start the new one. It's a pain. We actually have this hot loading code in, uh, environment where we can make changes to the code in real time without actually bringing the system down. And so we, for like two or three years, haven't had to do this whole stop everything, start everything procedure. So it was also a little bit of, uh, oh fuck, we haven't done it in a long time. How do we do this? <laughs> Sorry. And so. Um, it, it was it was very um, it was very painful. It got basically it got triggered by a network router um, that uh, our network provider quickly fixed, and then we had to do fixing of our own. Um, we've now f went over and switched to uh, a different uh, supervisor on the Cisco router, so I think we should be in a better state now. What, what, when that happened, what I when the, there was the blackout of WhatsApp, I was li hearing people in Spain like really desperate, but at the same time, they occasionally went back to texting. And I imagine that Vodafone Movistar must have experienced a peak in text usage during that time. And I think if you have this one again soon, you will bring them all down, because when they get all those text messages back, they're not going to know what to do with them. <laughs> we'll, we'll try, like, we'll, we'll try uh, to make sure we don't have those. It was a scare, I'm sure, for them to see so much revenue and traffic. Uh, more yes, questions. there's a question. Hello. Hello. So um, I'm a student from Egypt, and my question is, should we expect any integration between WhatsApp and, and Facebook in the near future? No. We have no plans for integration. Again, what we talked about in the last week is WhatsApp will remain independent and autonomous, and there are no plans to do any kind of integration whatsoever. I, I have a related question to that. A year from now, because to me what's incredible is what you, you built what you built with 50 people, right? And that is just, you know, mind-boggling, uh, close to half a billion people being served by 50 people. Now, I don't know if that was a question of, of a plan or it was just because you had raised only 8 million to build your company and, well, you couldn't have 200, you had to have 50. Now, um, being in a, in a better situation, because you have grown, because you're charging, and because you're part of Facebook, what would you say a year from now, how many people will work at WhatsApp? Well, um, what we, where we're going to end up this year actually has nothing to do with Facebook. We, we set out, at the end of last year, we all kind of got together in a company and figured out where we need to grow and where we need to hire. 
And we expect to actually double at the end of this year and probably end up with like 100, 110 people. But that has nothing to do with our acquisition um, and our partnership with Facebook. That has to do with our own plan, right? Just like we have our own roadmap for the product, we have our own roadmap for how many people we want to hire and in which areas. And so uh, I think we're probably going to double this year. We might end up with like 100, 100 and people. So if anybody here is, is a really good engineer, you know, send me a resume. It's Jan at whatsapp.com. It's pretty simple. Um, we're always hiring good engineers. Uh, and, uh, but you're going to have to support a lot of people <laughs> if you join WhatsApp. So there is a lot of pressure. Service, service can't, uh, service always has to work. Um, but it's, it's independent of our partnership with Facebook, right? We set out ourselves to build certain features that we're going to roll out this year. We set out ourselves to double our um, employee count this year. Uh, okay, well, I, I think we had a great conversation with, with two questions. You, you sure? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to say that Yang wasn't feeling well before they started, but so I'll something I'll fantastic I'll, I'll, I'll has happened. So we'll take more questions. Uh, all the way in the back, maybe, to give it, to change the, okay, well, I mean, just to get more diversity. You can stand up, you got a mic, huh? I always like so, to try everyone to participate. No, you don't need to, you're standing up. That's why okay, so it was interesting that, meanwhile, all of your competitors, such as uh, WeChat and Line, are adding many more features to their messaging apps. You're trying to keep it very simple and efficient. And Facebook mentioned yesterday that they want to increase the efficiency on the data usage. Are you planning to compete on that with your competition, your competitors? Well, I think uh, for us, it's not about uh, just adding features for the sake of adding features. We actually try to be very thoughtful about how we add features. Um, I actually enjoy ripping out stuff more than I enjoy adding it into the product. So we try to have a very minimalistic product. We want to make sure that it's so simple and easy to use that uh, people who have never had a computer, people who have never had a laptop, people who don't know what a file is, who don't know what a database is, who are buying their first smartphone, um, can use a product, right? So it has to be very easy to use. And um, it will it will continue to be a goal for us uh, and a challenge, right? Because on one hand, you want to add new functionality and new features, but on the other hand, you don't want to bloat your product and make user experience horrible. Uh, hi. Uh, I had a question over here. Um, and I was wondering if uh, your platform was ever going to be uh, more uh, video chat format, kind of like uh, FaceTime or Skype. And I was wondering if uh, you plan on that being uh, the future of WhatsApp or maybe uh, the future of messaging. Well, I think we're evolving as a product. And we this year will evolve from being a pure messenger to something that also lets you do telephone calls. So um, you will see us evolve into kind of WhatsApp as a communication platform where people can obviously make calls and, and message. But uh, I don't think we have any plans to do anything more besides from that. Try again. Try again. Hi, I'm Asier. I would like to know if WhatsApp, after having a open source platform so much boost at the moment, like Telegram, if WhatsApp is planning uh, to become open source? Uh, no plans. <laughs> why? Spam. No, no. <laughs> open source, why? Why, why is, is, is WhatsApp not open source and it's not trying to look forward to be open source, an open source platform? A, a lot of times, open source also means open network, and uh, they kind of go hand in hand together. And I think for us, uh, we really care about user experience, and we don't want people to get messages that they shouldn't be getting from spammers, right? That's like our, our number one thing that so far we've been really good at, and that's what makes our network successful, is that we care a lot about people not getting spam, and every time you do something that is open, which is a lot of times great for the internet, right? Like email is open. But think about how much spam you get in email and how much uh, scam and abuse and fraud you get through email, right? You get like all these phishing scams that happen through email, right? We don't want that stuff to happen on WhatsApp. Uh, 
Okay, so I have a question over here on the right for you, Jan. Sorry. Hi, I'm Jeroen, also from Yesa Business School. I have a question, um, and you've answered it before, but I wonder if you changed your mind. Will I, in the future, be able to WhatsApp 10 euro to my fellow students here to pay each other with WhatsApp? We have no plans for that. Um, it will be kind of cool to do that, but again, this goes back to focus, right? We're only 32 engineers. For somebody to go build that, it would take a lot of time and a lot of people, and a lot of effort to also then maintain and make sure that it works. We don't just like build shit and forget about it, right? We have voice messaging that continues to work. We have multimedia that continues to work, right? You can't just like build stuff and then not maintain it and not make sure that it scales and continues to grow. So this kind of goes back to focus. Yeah, it would be a cool thing to do. I agree with you, but are we going to do it anytime soon? No, because we're focused on messaging, right? To us, messaging, that's a fundamental thing. If you want to send money to somebody, you have so many other options to do that. Okay, <coughs> let's do a last, last question. Two, three more. <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, my name is Carlos, just two questions. First is, uh, is, can you share a little bit about how you track, if you track the virality of the app, how you're tracking that it's viral and what kind of analytic tools are you using for that? And number two, uh, can you share a little bit on your exit strategy on you know, getting such a great uh, number on, uh, on getting, uh, you know, with Facebook um, and, you know, your negoti negotiation strategy as far as that goes. Yeah, we have no tracking of virality whatsoever, which a lot of times puzzles people. Like, we have all of these um, telefriend features where you can invite a friend to join the network through SMS or through mail. And if you look at a lot of our competitors, like, they do it through a website that redirects and they track, like, we don't do any of that stuff, and a lot of times people ask us, like, why do you not do that? And we're like, well, why do we want to do that? Like, what difference does it make? If somebody invites a friend, they invite a friend. If somebody doesn't invite a friend, they don't. It's, it's, it's so binary to us that we have no interest in knowing how it all works. It's just like, they either perform the action or they don't perform the action. Um, so that, that doesn't really... Uh, interest us at all. Like, we have no interest in tracking virality of Zap. We know that it's viral. We're actually more interested in building a great product that people want to tell their friends about than tracking how much people tell their friends about it. It's like, if I'm going to take the engineering resources of building an analytics virality tracking system, I'd rather take that engineering source and say, OK, go fix these 10 bugs that users have reported. I think I don't think we had a question from like that side of the um, section. He also asked about your negotiating skills, if you care to share with the public. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hi, Jan. Uh, the guy here. Uh, do, do you think that uh, WhatsApp would have been possible without uh, Erlang? Probably, but it will be more painful. Um, we kind of stumbled Erlang by accident, but it turned out to be one of the better engineering decisions we have made in probably our lifetime. It just it works really well, and it just kind of fits and does everything we need it to do. And it scale it scales amazingly well. Like if you have uh, multiple cores on your box, it just kind of goes to like, oh, you have 32 cores? Oh, okay, I'm going to work on all 32 and distribute yeah. the load equally well. It's just like amazing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've got time for one last question, if you don't mind. And Hello. Hi, uh, this is Jeremy. I'm a student and founder. Um, so Zux had some pretty legendary negotiations, Instagram, with uh, Evan from Snapchat and now you. Uh, put us at the negotiation table. Uh, you know, what was the discussion like? Uh, who made the first offer? Did uh, Zuck take you out to dinner? Uh, what, what did that look like? You know, everybody keeps asking about this negotiation thing that happened. It's actually not that sexy. It wasn't as much about negotiation as it was it was more about how aligned we are as companies in our vision and how passionate we're both about building a great product and um, how much more this is uh, 
this is more of a partnership and not really just like a basic um, acquisition, right? And so we, we would always discuss about things like, well, you know, Mark wanted me to be on a board of Facebook and I wasn't too sure what it entails and why I would, um, uh, how, how I can contribute. And he's like, well, this, this to me means that we would, be partnership, we would be partners in this. Or we would talk about how WhatsApp would stay autonomous and independent and how we would continue to be in our building in Mountain View and not move to uh, Menlo campus that they have. And so, you know, we would mostly talk about actual things that would make sure that WhatsApp continues to be successful and to grow. And, you know, everything else was kind of secondary after that. Okay. So I just wanted to thank everyone for coming here. I think we've all learned a lot. I certainly did. I'm glad, I'm really glad that you felt better and that this became so interactive. And I think we can all just go back to our own startups and keep building because I think that's the biggest message we get out of Young. Thank you, Young. Thank you, Another big round of applause for Jan and Martin.